Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to get started with Comfy UI on Windows. We'll go over how to install it and then how to get all of your models and stuff. So the first thing you need is 7-zip, if you don't have it already. Most people do, but it is a requirement just because of the way they packaged up Comfy UI. So if you don't have it already, just go ahead and download the 64-bit Windows installer. Next thing you'll need to download is Git. If you have Python, you probably already have Git, but you can download it here if you don't. Again, it's the 64-bit Windows installer. And then we can get into actually downloading Comfy UI. So we can head over to the Comfy UI GitHub page. And it's a little intimidating at first, but if we just scroll down and go to install Comfy UI, there's a link to the download and it's just a 7-zip file. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and open up your downloads folder. I have it right here and then find a place that you want to put your actual Comfy UI installation. So mine's going to live in the Applications folder. I'm just going to drag it over here. And this is just a folder I made, it's nothing special. We'll right click, 7-zip, and then extract here. And then we just have to wait for that to extract. It might take a while just because Comfy UI is pretty big, but don't worry, it'll be done in no time. Okay, now that that's extracted, we can go ahead and delete the 7-zip file. We don't need that anymore. And we have this new folder, Comfy UI Windows Portable. Double click on that. And here we have all of our uh, essential files. Uh, the run NVIDIA GPU.bat is what we're going to use to run it. But first, we need to install the Comfy UI Manager. So if we double click on Comfy UI and then go into Custom Nodes, click on this bar up here and type in CMD. Next thing we'll do is we'll grab the, the link to Comfy UI Manager. So we can go to the GitHub page, click code, and then click copy URL to clipboard. If we go back into our command prompt, we can type git clone and then right click and press enter. Now that that's finished, we can X out of that we can head back into our Comfy UI installation. I'm going to go back into the root directory and I'm going to run run nvidia gpu.bat. Okay, now it's done installing and it's going to open up a new browser tab automatically, but I'm just going to open it manually. So leave this command prompt open as long as you have Comfy UI running. This is the actual program. And then we'll have this default workflow ready to go. The only thing now is that we don't have any models downloaded, so we'll have to download some from either Civit AI or Hugging Face. So to prep for downloads, I'm going to show you where everything goes. If we go back into our folder here, we can go into Comfy UI, Models, and here's where all of our models live. Checkpoints is where our actual stable diffusion models go. I'm going to make two new folders here. This one's SD 1.5. This one's SDXL. And just for fun, let's go ahead and add one for SD 3. And then you'll also want to have a folder for LoRa's. Here's your LoRa's folder, and you can do the same thing. I'm going to go back to Models. I'm going to copy all of these. And I'm just going to make the same exact folders here in my LoRa's folder. This way, they're all nicely organized, so when I go to find one, I know exactly what model it's for. Currently, Stable Diffusion 3 doesn't have any LoRa's, but I made that folder anyway. But let's go ahead and go to Civit AI and find some models. My favorite Stable Diffusion 1.5 model is Dream Shaper 8. You can just download the regular version. LCM just means it's a faster version. Inpainting means that it takes in context from around the image to fill in a gap. And Diffusers is just a different method of using the model. So you don't need any of these three versions, just download the regular version. If you click download, it'll download a safe tensors file. 
Let's grab a Laura as well. Let's do a quality slider. This one's for Pony Diffusion, but it works the same. All that means is that we can't use it with SD 1.5. We'll have to download Pony Diffusion to use this quality slider. For fun, let's download Pony Diffusion as well. I prefer the Turbo DPO merge. And then finally, let's download Stable Diffusion 3. For Stable Diffusion 3, it actually has some special installation requirements, so I'll link my video below for how to specifically install SD3. But basically, all you'll need is the safe tensors file, and then you'll also need the text encoders. So you'll need the clip G, L, and the T5XXL. So let me download all of those. And all these files are pretty big, so we just have to wait for them all to be finished. Our downloads are all finished, and now in our models folder, or in checkpoints, I actually made another folder called Pony, just because even though Pony Diffusion is an SDXL model, uh, its LoRa's don't work uh, with SDXL models. So, we'll go ahead and drag Pony Diffusion v6 into our Pony folder. We will move SD3 medium into the SD3 folder. This is all inside of checkpoints. Dream Shaper 8 goes into SD 1.5. And then I didn't download any SDXL models, but you would put them in SDXL. You can even just put them directly in the checkpoints folder. Next up, I'm going to go for the LoRa's, so find the LoRa's folder. I'm going to make one for Pony. Let's move over Pony Quality Slider. And now all we have is these clip files. These will go into a different folder, so we'll go back to Models. We're going to scroll down to find Clip. And then we'll drag all three of these files into there. And with that, all of your models are now installed. Go ahead and go back to Comfy UI and click the Refresh button. It also helps to just do a full page refresh. And now if we look into our load checkpoint, we can find our models. So the first one that loaded up was Pony Diffusion V6. We can set our resolution. So Pony Diffusion uses one megapixel for the resolution. We're going to use Euler Ancestral. And we're going to use a super low uh, classifier free guidance scale just because it's a turbo model. We can go ahead and add our prompt. And we can cue the prompt. Now, if you're used to Automatic 11.11 or WebUI Forge, you might be wondering where the preview is. You'll have to go into the manager. And then we can go to preview method and set that to auto. Then we can close this. And I think you have to restart the whole WebUI, but it might just start working. Now let's move on to how to use LoRa's because that's a pretty essential feature. It's a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over this load checkpoint. I'm just going to double click to open up the search and I'm just going to type in LoRa and it'll do load LoRa. I'm going to move it up here just for clarity. We already have the quality slider loaded. I'm going to move the model pipeline into here the clip pipeline into here. And then the model from here goes into the K sampler. And the clip goes into each of these clip text encodes. So now we can set an appropriate value for the actual LoRa. And then we can cue the prompt and see what it looks like. And there we go, it definitely worked. And then for other things like textual inversion, all you have to do is type embedding into here and it'll start popping up automatically. I don't have any embeddings downloaded and those aren't really used as much as LoRa's, so I'm not going to worry about it here. But what about other features from Automatic 11.11, like image to image? For image to image, it's actually pretty simple. All we have to do is we'll double click and we'll do a load image. 
I'm just going to use the example for now. Next up, we'll need a VAE encode. We pass the image into here, and then we also pass it the VAE. We move this over, and we toss the latent into the k-sampler. If your image isn't the same size as the empty latent image, what you can also do is you'll need a resize image node, but that's actually a custom node, so that's one of the ones you'll download. So that does bring us into downloading custom nodes. With ComfyUI Manager, it makes it really easy. All we have to do is if you have a workflow that has red nodes, you can just click install missing custom nodes and it'll open up just the nodes that you need to download. Go ahead and click on custom nodes manager and here you have all of the actual nodes that you don't have installed yet. So these ones on the first page are actually really good to download. Things like the impact pack, uh, the inspire pack. Uh, but what I need is essentials. We click install and it loads for a second. So it just says restart required, but we're going to install a few more nodes. So I need advanced control net as well. These aux preprocessors are important. And then we also need advanced control net. And that's going to be it for now. If you need something like IP adapter, that does require extra models, so I'm not going to go over that in this video. We can go ahead and click restart and reboot the server. And it's going to give you this little reconnecting window uh, until it's finished loading. But you can actually check on the status of that by going into your command prompt, and it'll show you exactly what's going on. All right, successfully restarted and we have our workflow back open. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to use Stable Diffusion 3. We'll head over to the Stable Diffusion 3 model on Hugging Face. We can go into Comfy Example Workflows, and then we'll just use the basic workflow. We'll go back into Comfy UI, and then we can drag in our Comfy Example. In order to use the workflow, you have to set your own models, and this is pretty common with pretty much every workflow that you're gonna download from someone else. So go ahead and click on the checkpoint name and we can use SD3 medium. And then we can go into all the clips. So clip G, clip L, and then T5XXL. You'll probably want to randomize the seed. And this is where your prompts go. But we can go over here, click Q prompt. It looks like nothing's going on, but it's just loading the checkpoint. So now the k-sampler is green, so we know it's started. We can zoom in. It's really interesting the details that this model decided to focus on, because um, it actually is a really censored model, so it's a little bit surprising to see that. But uh, nonetheless, it's pretty good. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like the video and share this with someone who still uses Automatic 1111. Have a great day, guys.